Okay, I promised myself if something wasn't on YouTube, I would post it. So we're doing a Honeywell uh, R7284 oil control. Um, I have a an oil burner. This is a butte, real butte here. So here's the uh, the water boiler part, and here's the uh, one of the aquastats that I think is the primary control. And we got our two other zones over here. Uh, so we got three zones in the house. Uh, we got this furnace. I got a Beckett or a Becky, as I've seen some guys say. So uh, it was clicking on and off, on and off, on and off. And uh, if I would unplug my CAD cell here, if I would take the eye out, um, it would work for its 45 second trial lockout with my uh, with my old uh, CAD cell relay. This guy right here. So. Here's the old relay. I don't know what went bad. I'm this is looking like a transistor. Maybe that went bad. Or, um, uh, I think that green one's a capacitor, but I'm not sure. The resistances look good, so I might try to repair this guy because these uh, these these things seem to be a little more robust. Uh, I've seen some of these fail, but if you can get your hands on one of these guys, um, it looks like it can be used for a lot of applications. So uh, just look at your manual here. And I'll, I'll go through this first, and then we will uh, look at the actual hardware. I got my associate in the background there working uh, working pretty hard. Um, but so uh, this will go through these lockouts, the electrical rating, installation. Uh, I kind of just plug and played. I'm going to go back through the actual uh, programming of it. Um, but, you know, this is more or less an overview, but you have all these different scenarios. So because I have a boiler and we're not using this, uh, what do they have? This uh, Enviracom and that, I, I imagine that's that Ecom uh, port right there. So since I don't have an Enviracom and I do have an oil-fired boiler, uh, here's the CAD cell that I replaced at first. It seems I had a problem with the brain, so you want to put your jumper in from T to T. And there's your guy right there. Um, uh, with this, I had to add on uh, another uh, hot wire. So your limit is coming from B1. So, excuse me for the quick motion, but there's my B1, and that's coming down underneath here. And that's feeding uh, your B1 is feeding your limit so if we look that's the red wire here so if you see limit uh that's that's connected right here and that's coming in on my b1 i had to put this guy in here and this is this is a total hack job i got my ground wire there um this this wire here the hot that i borrowed is uh coming to your l1 so that's your hot and that's actually powering the uh this actual device what I've seen in another video is somebody took the limit and the L1 and whenever this zone is calling for heat you know whenever this guy trips right here um, then that is going to turn on your brain but uh, I guess it's best to keep the brain on um, so I, I tried doing that I, I kept this ground wire in and did this hack job here because I believe you could steal um, I, I could, I could turn a white and a black on this wire to a hot and I can use my Daddy, green for a this. neutral. You have one second. I'm still doing a video here, but here, let's see. We'll put it on. What are you going to do? Woo. <laughs> All right. One more try. All right. Let's see. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, the one All right. Where my head in it. That is silly. Here, let me try to finish explaining this. So, um, okay, so I think we went through most of the wiring, but yeah. So you have your, uh, unfortunately for mine, my uh, my uh, burner motor and my igniter. Uh, the burner motor actually was orange, and you can see the orange is hooked to the orange. Um, the igniter is a blue, and actually, so that's your transformer. I think this thing does like thirty thousand volts. So you got the two black wires. So the one you want to connect to that blue wire, 
And then the other one, you actually, you'll see a black attached to one of these grounds in here. And that's actually right there. You'll see that black. Uh, since we have two black wires, you know, we got to go, go, uh, go from the hot to the common, you know, from the hot to the ground. So that guy performs that purpose. We got all our other white wires, you know, all the other commons hooked to the commons. Um, so let's, let's take a look at this brain again, go through it from that level. So here's our CAD cell. I have a new wired CAD cell. I might put the old one back in. That's why I have so much slack. We got the brand new CAD cell here. I'd put this guy in figuring maybe uh, this old one had a different, you, you can take an ohm meter like I've taken Daddy. right here. Uh, one minute little lady. And um, so I ohmed it out. This one was running around a thousand ohms and it's upper resistance when uh, when it was dark. You know, you can either cover these guys up. Oh, and always, always put a screwdriver across these. I saw one guy uh, troubleshooting by putting a screwdriver across these but uh, I've heard from my dad just uh, Mary Stiles can you go in the other room if you're going to play that song uh, I saw one guy put uh, uh, my dad mentioned always short that out just in case because it is I think about 30,000 volts so don't touch that with wet hands um, so but this this is our new CAD so I might put the old one in um, so uh the end of what I'm going to do, and I haven't done, this was plug and play so far, but I'm going to uh, go back through the software. I'm, I want to make sure my lockout is up to uh, 45 seconds. Looking at our manual here, um, it does say somewhere in the service that uh, if you hold the I button, I believe it should get you out of your service lockout. So maybe anybody hopefully watching the video, that should help you out. Once you get into your service lockout, um, you know, these things need to be held down for 10 seconds. That'll get you out. Um, but yeah, what else do I want to do? So this was set that the uh, the igniter, so the, the transformer, uh, only turns on in the beginning. I, I saw another video where uh, people just leave those on. And for that, you should check through your uh, door. Make sure you don't have any smoke. And people who are better at this, you know uh really really uh hone that in where you got your gap right you got your nozzle correct and and your uh your smoke is down and they look at the co2 output i believe or i i, I know that they measure the exhaust um anyway yeah if you don't have this manual check it out but that's the only other um there it is reset control three times uh, after completing a call for heat, number of resets is non-adjustable in some controls. I'm going to turn that off. Um, reset device by pressing and holding reset button for a minimum of 10 seconds. So that should get you, because uh, it enters the restricted mode, hard lockout call service. That should, uh, uh, that should at least help you out. So hey, hopefully to somebody watching this video, you didn't have to watch uh, eight minutes of, uh, of a video just to get to that point. So pretty much, yeah, this guy right here, uh, it looks like it can do a lot of different things for anybody else. You know, this is for a boiler, but, uh, it does do your, uh, it does do, uh, uh, also an oil fired forced air system. So, you know, we'll see how long this lasts. I don't think it's good as the other, uh, more simple ones. I might get the, uh, the Honeywell one, uh, the one before this, as I showed you, it only has the three. Uh, the three wires, and I did see a Protecto relay or something, some Honeywell. Um, this is a Honeywell, and I, I really like the Honeywell stuff. I'm a, I'm a fan. I got uh, all the Honeywell seems to do pretty well, and so does the Takeo, but I, I just seem a little more partial to Honeywell. This new cell is a Honeywell also. So, hey, well, hopefully some of that helped you, and uh, good luck, <laughs> because if you're needing to watch this video, it means you need it. So, hey, good luck.